Hi guys and welcome back to my What are you doing? You don't need to hat on indoors. Welcome back to my channel. Spray. So in today's video Medicine. Can I just start the freaking video? In today's video, we're going to be looking at how to prevent muscle loss when you can't train and also how quickly you're going to lose muscle tissue when you can't work out. We are now a couple of days on from when I started this intro just because unfortunately the battery ran out on the camera. So as you can probably see, the cornflakes have gone from on top of my head. And of course I've got lovely luscious locks now. And I am two weeks on from when I had my hair transplant. So today I'm actually going back to the gym just to do some light hypertrophy work and isolation work, which is really cool. So what have I been doing to minimize the amount of fat that I've been able to have on my body whilst also maintaining the maximum amount of muscle over this two week period? Let's firstly delve into some of the facts. So whether you have been on holiday, you've been injured, you've had an illness, you can actually lose up to about a kilogram of lean muscle tissue in a week or have 11% decrease in muscle size over a 10 day period. Now, cardiovascular conditioning will usually be the first thing to go over a 10 day period after stopping training. And next, usually to be affected will be your VO2 max, which can be affected after about two weeks. Now this will differ depending on your gym experience, whether you're a gym veteran or a newbie, but bear in mind this will depend on the type of training that you're also delving into and your frequency in terms of your lifting. Now thanking the lifting gods that there's actually a reasonable explanation for this which isn't permanent change and is usually down to glycogen loss. So it believed you can lose up to about 16% of the muscle size just due to the fact that we've lost glycogen over this non-training period. In terms of the ratio that we lose glycogen, it is been shown that we can lose up to 20% of the glycogen that's usually stored within the muscle by up to 20% in a week. And then that can then increase to 50% over a two week period. So when you do look into the mirror and think, I look like a 16 year old wet flannel who's never seen a bench press in his life. It's not like you've gone back in the, back to the future. It's because of glycogen depletion over this non-training period. This is essentially what's gonna make you look a little bit flat, but again, it will start to replenish. There's also an article which has been evidenced by uh, J. Apple Physio, I'm not getting that name right, in 2013, written on my muscle glycogen resynthesis in humans, which has been shown that glycogen will start to replenish that once that subject start the training cycle again. The other fact that is also going to come into play when we're looking at muscle size and muscle loss over a non-training period is water and water retention. Like I explained in the last video, which will pop over here somewhere, we will lose about three grams of water for every gram of glycogen loss, which if we're losing 50% over a two week window, we're gonna be losing quite a lot of water retention, which is essentially what is gonna make the muscle belly look fuller. However, what you've also got to remember is, as human beings, that muscle is also energy costly. So when we get past that two week window onto the third week, we are actually gonna to start to lose some of that muscle tissue but you don't need to go AWOL about this. It's only gonna be in small increments. So what can you do to make sure that when you are having this time off from the gym, that you are maximizing the most amount of muscle that you can keep as possible whilst also keeping the fat retention down. So this last two weeks for me, I've just simply been doing walking just to keep the engine ticking over and to also keep me sane. So I've been generally doing about two walks every day or every other day about 50 minutes in the, in the morning, 45 minutes in the evening. However, if your time off allows or your injury allows, you can also do some training at home or some resistance bits at the gym. But in terms of maintaining that muscle mass that you have got, it's believed that you'll only need to put in about a third of the effort. So that whether that is a third of the intensity or volume, or whether that is a third of the time. So example, if you usually do a 60 minute session, simply doing a 20 minute session will be enough for you to keep hold of that muscle tissue that you've already built over this period of time. However, do remember that don't push the injury, don't train on top of the injury, and avoid excessive cardio. What, what you will have is muscle memory. So when you go back into the gym, that muscle memory will still be there. And when you start training, lifting, 
and dieting again, it won't take you as long to get back to that stage that you want to wear. So how do you control your calories? One thing to remember is that don't cut calories too much. When you're not training as you want to be getting an adequate supply of nutrients. Plus, you aren't looking for fast fat loss, but more of a maintenance period and something that you can sustain over this non-training period. If you get into a mindset of, shit, I'm not training, so I now need to cut calories, cut meals, you're only going to lose more muscle and create bad associations with foods. Cutting calories can also lead to muscle breakdown and what you also remember is don't be afraid to have carbs. The carbs is obviously what's going to produce your main source of energy. So if you start cutting carbohydrates too low just because you're not exercising, then your body is then going to start to need to use more of the protein that you're using to keep muscle tissue as the source of energy. As advised with protein to still try and keep about a gram per pound of body weight in order to stop muscle breakdown whilst also minimizing muscle loss. It may even be an idea for some people to just simply eat at maintenance in terms of keeping hold of that size if you're not looking to drop down fat. In terms of eating a surplus, you've got to think that it may be beneficial in terms of you maintaining this muscle mass that you've got, but you're also going to start to accumulate some fat, which is going to make you look smaller anyway. Now, what you can do is to work out your calories and macros for your body weight, your age, your sex, and your usual activity level. You can jump over onto the micro school as shown in the screen and work out your calories exactly for yourself here. So for me over this last two week period, I've been trying to minimize fat mostly as I find it quite easy to put muscle tissue on. So when you're deciding what to do over the next two to three weeks when you're having some time for the gym, I think the real thing to remember is you've got to decide what's best for you and your body type. For me, I seem to put on muscle quite easily so I'm not bothered about sacrificing a little bit of muscle tissue in order to keep my body fat percentage levels down whereas if you're someone who stays really lean all the time but struggles to put muscle tissue on then maybe it may be better for you to stay in either a calorie maintenance or just around that figure whilst keeping the protein intake high. You've also got to remember that taking a couple of weeks off the gym every now and again is probably going to benefit you more than have a negative effect. It's going to help you replenish some of your hormones, it's going to give your central nervous system a break, and it's also going to give you joints a break. The only thing that you're really going to lose is a bit of a pump and visually how full that you actually are. So you've got to think of it like when you deflate a paddling pole, how long does it take to blow back up? Quick one. So I could walk bends now if it was like a specific time. Not very clever. Okay, babe, one second. Don't talk. That so. at half eight, gets not half. Might as well pause that second again, like because I fucking need to record it. But before closing this video, I think the other thing that you've got to remember more so in a period of time off is you've got to think about your mindset and your mental well-being within this period. So for me, I'm one of those people who literally pull the friggin' hair off of what I've got left of it if I'm not training or if I haven't got some kind of routine or structure to my day to day. So just going on a couple of walks may be enough sometimes just to mentally satisfy you and keep that routine and keep those habits in check that you usually have so then when you go back into your training split and your routine it make things a hell of a lot easier to keep that transition instead of everything just simply going out the window. Hope you found this video nice and helpful guys and it will help you either in this current period of time off or when you next need to take time off. So please give it a massive thumbs up and a like if you did so. And whilst you are down there, please subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you in my next video.